still using Windows 10 on my new computer. This sleeper build, I don't know if you saw that yet. The specs for this computer, I'll put them all in the description down there. The quick specs, the CPU is a 7940HX. That is a small form factor, tiny little CPU that is stupid fast. 16 cores, 32 threads. The GPU is this one right here, RTX 4060 Ti. It's only eight gigabytes, so hopefully that's not gonna bite me in the ass, but we'll just see, won't we? So I've already done the tests in Windows 10. Now we're going to install Windows 11 and get that activated. Someone asked why I use OEM keys as if it were a bad thing. I've been using OEM keys since the XP day, so I'd be a hypocrite if I did not recommend OEM keys. Let me show you something right here. This is the Microsoft Store. That's the retail price. And now let's head over to hookies.com. There's a Christmas sale. This is the price that I want to pay. You know what? Let's pay something lower than that. I got a coupon code, TS25. Hit apply. And there we go. $23.22. This also works with Windows 10. And right now, a little secret, Windows 10 does unlock Windows 11 still. So just Google maybe in a year or two. That's not going to be the case. But right now, it still is. So if you want to click on buy now on this one, put in TS25 and take a look at that. 1761. Coupon code also works for Office 2019 and Office 2016. These are not online. No monthly fee. They just work. So you want to grab a copy of Office 2019, put in the coupon code and take a look at that. 5356. You can grab Windows 11. You can grab Windows 10. You can get both Home and Pro for both of those. And they also have Office. So if you want an offline version of Office that doesn't have the monthly fee, grab it here. So what's the difference between an OEM key and a regular key? OEM keys are locked to your hardware. So if you want to go to a different computer, they generally don't transfer, but sometimes they do. It's like mysteries of the universe, man. Anyway, um, you also don't get Microsoft's tech support. You have to use your own tech support because you're your own OEM at this point. Let's go ahead and check out with our copy of Windows 11 Pro. Going to use TS25 here and I'm going to submit my order. 269. There we go. Sweet. Yeah, sure. We'll save that. So after you make your purchase, just go ahead and extract your key. And then this is a history of all the keys I've purchased, but let's go ahead and click on view keys and codes for the new one. Now we're just going to copy this. All right, here we just need to press start and then type activate. You'll see activation settings. Go ahead and click on that. And then right here it says not active. That's okay. Just click on change product key, paste in our product key, press next, and then click on activate. Hey, look at that active. Now I can come back over here, change my wallpapers and everything else. Great. Don't be messing around with those exorbitant retail keys. Grab an OEM key. So thanks very much to Who Keys for sponsoring the video. And now let's get down to business and check out these benchmarks. All right, let's start with Microsoft Flight Simulator because I feel like being really divisive today, I guess. I don't know. I'm playing this. I'm just going to take off from this. I'm trying to like find a good spot to benchmark this. I'm just going to go to New Zealand. I forget the name of the airport. And I'm just going to go and do a standard takeoff at the same time of day. That's what I made sure I did because, you know, like things change. Luckily, the weather was the same and it wasn't raining or anything. But yeah, the, the, the same exact takeoff two different times in, in two different days. And by the way, I haven't had any trouble with this game. I, a lot of people are having so much trouble with it. It does feel like it needs to be in the oven a little bit longer, but it's been working just fine for me. I just need to wait until my, you know, joystick comes in so I can really play it. So I'm not... I'm not endorsing anything in this video. I'm just testing it, but it does look incredible. All right, so I'm testing this just with the, the high setting. Probably should have played it on medium, but whatever. Windows 10 was 43, and check that out. Windows 11, 47.9. That's a bit of a difference, but the 1% lows are almost the same, so the game, to me, felt about the same. I think the 1% lows may be more important than the overall frame rate because that's what you feel. You feel those 1% lows. You feel the stutter. You feel it when it drops below a certain threshold. But Fly Simulator felt almost identical on Windows 10 and Windows 11. But we do have a bit of an advantage here with Windows 11. All right, let's load up the best game of the decade, and that's Baldur's Gate 3. I tested this one twice because the environments in this game severely impact the FPS. So depending upon where you are, if you're in the Underdark, it's not going to be nearly as crazy as if you're in a city. So I tested it in the Underdark and then in Rivington, which is a city, to see what the differences are. Now in Underdark, first off, I wanted to try with DLSS off because that's the way I prefer to play most of my games. And check this out. The overall score, you know, Windows 11 wins by a little bit. But look at the 1% lows. It feels so much smoother on Windows 11. Now when we turn DLSS on, let's do that. With DLSS on, Windows 10 actually won. So I'm like, what is going on here? You know, DLSS off, Windows 11 wins. DLSS on, what? Windows 10 just, I don't know. This this is going to be a theme, just so you know. Like, because the performance, it, it it's weird. Like, a lot of, there's so, there's going to be so many times during the video, I'm like, this is weird. Well, it could be because I've only got eight gigabytes of video memory, but just leave me alone, all right? Leave me alone. Let's move on. 
So in Rivington with DLSS off, we have a similar story, but I think we're kind of hitting a cap here with my, my limited video memory. Windows 10 with DLSS off, almost identical, but the 1% lows are a little bit higher with Windows 11. So Windows 11 barely wins. Now let's turn DLSS on. And this is weird. Again, Windows 10 wins with DLSS on. So Baldur's Gate 3 DLSS performance is better in Windows 10. But regular, you know, without DLSS, better in 11. All right, let's move right along here and take a look at Cyberpunk. First off, we're going to do Cyberpunk RTX Ultra DLSS off. DLSS off is virtually unplayable on both. It's amazing what happens when you turn DLSS on. Check that out. So DLSS on and it's again almost identical on both just a tiny bit of an advantage right here with the one percent lows on windows 11. so slight edge to windows 11 but let's check out stalker shall we first off dlss off and we can see tiniest of edges to windows 11 just a few fps more on windows 11 but not much but we turn dlss on check that out now you know windows 11 is ahead by a little bit more when it comes to the fps but the one percent lows are almost identical and it feels to me very similar so windows 11 wins again but the one percent lows are almost the same and they're actually a little better with windows 10 so i don't even know it's weird all right i did some canned benchmarks so if you're not satisfied with my non-canned benchmarks well check this out this is ridiculous because the unigen superposition running at 4k it's identical it's not even one fps difference so yeah that's pretty crazy now let's check out valley valley again almost identical except the one percent lows or the i guess the low fps not the one percent low this is just the the minimum fps better with windows 10. Mm hmm all right let's go ahead and do a just a straight up cpu gpu test i want to see what cinebench is doing our single and our also multi-core score and another uh, weird situation here where windows 10 wins the single core performance score and windows 11 wins the multi-core score by a you know decent margin so i i don't even know it's weird is it worth it to upgrade to windows 11. now here's the thing if you're going to upgrade to windows 11 you need to be ready to fight with microsoft microsoft is going to have its talents in you i still prefer windows 10 uh, like a lot I, you know, kind of like some of the things that are going on with Windows 11. I like some of the improvements. Some things are a little better here and there. But Microsoft is doing so many things to fight with the power users, to make the power users conform to, I don't know, just this nonsense bubbly interface. The Windows recall is a massive step in the wrong direction, and they keep doubling down on it now that's like it's built in. If you try to uninstall it, you're going to break your copy of uh, Windows Explorer. You can use Explorer Patcher, make it run like, you know, Explorer version 10. So it'll be, you know, won't get the tabs and everything. You won't get your, your fancy tabs, but that might be a way to make it work. Every time there's like an update or something, I'm going to run a command to make sure that recall is completely disabled. So some people were saying it's enabled by default. When I installed this, it looked like it was disabled by default. So yeah. And I've got all the AI stuff completely disabled as well. There's no whatever they call it. I don't know. Bing AI? What do they call it? I forgot. Cortana? No, it's um, Copilot. That's what it is. I'm going to stay on Windows 11 on this machine because I like having a machine that's on Windows 11 because my main rig's on Windows 10. That way I can, you know, be in both worlds and understand what's going on with both of them. But if I were you, I mean, you're going to have to upgrade to Windows 11 at some point unless you're going to go to Linux, which is what I would probably do if I didn't have to use certain programs like my audio programs and stuff. You know, Linux is uh, is nice these days. As far as the performance differences go, yeah, Windows 11's a little bit faster. We're gonna say the tiny edge, but it's weird. Like the performance is, it's it's too weird. Like what is going on? It shouldn't, I feel like some of that stuff just shouldn't have been the way it was. Slight, slight, slight performance edge. And the main thing with Windows 11 is the gameplay was a little smoother. The 1% lows were better. So yeah, it's a little bit better for gaming depending on the game and depending on the settings, but generally a little smoother. And also like a lot of times you'll see like more CPU usage with Windows 11. It's just, you know, a little bit more of a refined experience, I guess, but is it enough to make you want to upgrade? 
that's going to be up to you. So let me know what you think. Let me know if you're going to upgrade. Let me know what you're going to do in 2025 when Microsoft forces you to upgrade from Windows 10. Where are you going? You're going to go to 11? You're going to go to Linux? I'm curious. Let me know all that in the comments. Also, do not forget we have our half price sale going on. Save the shelves until the end of the month. Half price on everything I have here in the studio. That's a lot of these shirts here. This stuff's not half price. It's already priced to move. I'm selling all the used gear I have here. And then some of these cups, like this one, is half price. The stuff that's print on demand like these are not half price. Mouse pads, half price. Desk mats, half price. So head over to epicpants.com while the sale's still going on this month. And I'll see you in the comments. Mm -hmm.